Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I got my hair cut yesterday, so it's a little bit short, so these suckers are not going up. Just wanna preface that, you're gonna to have to look at the wings throughout the entire video. I wanted to come on and use some of the products that I talked about in my last video as being my recommendations and favorites from Sephora. The VIB event is still going on, so I thought it'd be fun for us just to get ready because I haven't really done makeup, I feel like, in a while on YouTube. Maybe that's just me, but it will be a good way for me to showcase some of these products that maybe I didn't have on my face the day that I made the recommendation video. So let's go ahead and get started. Dab my brows, prime my eyes, and put a bit of corrector under the eyes. It is super dreary today in Tennessee, and so I have my lights on full blast. Hopefully the lighting is okay. Let's go ahead and start with complexion. I am going to use the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I know that this is a foundation that you either love or you hate. And honestly, I can say that about all foundations. Like, just because I say that I love a foundation does not mean that every single person that views my videos is going to love it. Foundation is very personal. I personally like this. And I did go back on my Instagram and the past four client pictures that I posted all had this foundation on. So if you wanna see how it looks on other people besides me, then you can check that out as well. I'm in the color Patagonia Medium 1.2. I talked about how this is an, also a great mixing foundation. I didn't talk about any kind of primers because I'm not someone who wears a primer every day, but I think I'd be remiss not to talk about the Hollywood Flawless Filter, even though probably everybody watching this has already tried it or had it at some point. But I have a fairly new color. Um, I went through almost an entire bottle of three. I bought four which is more of a skin tone color for me. I've used it on Instagram as like an all over kind of tint, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on my hand and mix it in with this NARS foundation. Just to give a little bit more luminosity, even though if you search my channel, the um, NARS Complete Foundation, you'll see that I used it in like a playing with new makeup video, and you'll see that it is not a super flat matte. So I'm not saying you need to add something in. I was just doing this for the sake of playing with more product. So super easy to blend in. You can see foundation, no foundation. And yes, this is no foundation. I've had so many comments lately, especially on my Chanel video that I did about, I mean, nasty. I've had to delete some of them. Um, who are you kidding? You already have foundation on when you started this video. Blah, 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 blah. No, y'all, this is, this is my skin. This is my skin without foundation. I have absolutely no reason whatsoever to come on camera with foundation on my skin and do a foundation review. It doesn't make sense to me. I feel like this foundation is a solid medium, buildable to a medium full coverage, but it doesn't look cakey on the skin. And I still have quite a bit of product that I'm wasting. That's the only thing I will say. This isn't a pump, so I most of the time squeeze too much product out. There's the foundation mixed with the Charlotte Tilbury. The Charlotte Tilbury is very versatile. If for some reason you don't have it, I mean, it can be used as a liquid highlight, an all over tint, or mixed in under your foundation or with your foundation like I just did. Now for concealer, I will go ahead and use the Pat McGrath, which is what I had on in that video. The only other concealer I talked about was the Kosas, and I feel like I have used that so much, so. I thought I would go ahead and use this again. I am using the color LM or Light Medium 9. I also have Light 7, but I feel like Light Medium 9 is better for me only because I tend to go for more skin tone concealers that match my skin tone versus brightening concealers. I have never been one that's really comfortable with a super bright under eye, especially as I get older. But this concealer is really good coverage, wears really nicely throughout the day, and I just don't ever have issues with it. Like, I, 
I have some concealers where I'll wear them one day and I'll be like, oh, this is fabulous. And then I'll wear them the next day. Yeah, not so fabulous. And this is just a very consistently good concealer for me. I'm going to use a cream bronzer. So let's do that before we start on the eyes. And I'm going to showcase the Tower 28 bronzer that I talked about. This is Bronzino in West Coast. I'm using the BK Beauty 106 brush, which is one of my favorite brushes for cream bronzer. I love the size of it. I like the density of it. And I'm just picking up some of the product and applying it where I would apply bronzer. Now, when I swatched it that day, I mean, it looks scary because it, it is an illuminating bronzer. It's marketed as one. It is definitely one. I mean, they're not trying to hide the fact that it's illuminating. But it can look a little scary when you swatch it. So I wanted to use it on the skin so that you could see how pretty it is. You can see I'm going all over my cheek, really. I mean, it's so pretty. I just want it kind of everywhere. <laughs> I haven't gotten my order yet. I need to go back and check. I don't remember whether I ordered the cream blush from Tower 28 that everybody tells me I need to try in Magic Hour, but if I didn't, I might go back and get that because these are really very reasonably priced to begin with, and with a discount on top, there's really no reason to try them, in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna let that sink in. Look how glowy. Oh, I love, love the glow. Let's start on the eyes. I am going to be using the Busy Art Petite Pro in Solstice. I had on Midsummer in that video, which was more of like a pinky look. Um, I have done a whole eye look using Midsummer. I will try to remember to link that down in the description box, but it's part of my most requested eye look series, which I have a playlist of, so you can find it there. I also talked about my favorite eye crayon of all time, which is the Caviar Stick from Laura Mercier in Copper. So what I'm gonna do, since this is gonna be more of a copper solstice look. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this and show you how easy and how beautiful this color is on the eye. I mean, just right there. It's like, well, stick some bronzer in the crease and you're good to go. This is my second or third one and I'm almost done. It's, I think if I'm speaking correctly, which I'm pretty sure I am, I think it is the only eyeshadow stick crayon cream type of product that I have ever repurchased. And I've repurchased it more than once. That's how much I love it. Now I'm going to go into the Solstice palette, which looks like this. I think I forgot to mention on that video that these pans are also removable. I am going to go into these two matte colors right here with my wrapper number 15. Kind of mix them together and apply them into the crease. And quite honestly, I'm, I mean, I'm probably going to be topping this copper color, but you'll see, like, this is an eye look in itself. Just that caviar stick with a crease color. And I'm not even saying you have to put a crease color um, in the crease with this. You don't by any means. In fact, the matte versions of the caviar sticks, I often find myself will just put all over my lid, blend it up into the crease, and call it a day which is why I love them so much, because they're great for travel. They're just one and done. They're fabulous. But for the sake of showing you these products, I'm going to top this color with, a. am gonna start out with this color right here, and I'm gonna use my refer number two brush, and I'm gonna place that more on the inner half of the lid on top of that copper stick. And then I'm gonna turn the brush around and I'm gonna go into this darker color right here, but that still has a little bit of sheen to it right next to the color we just used. But you can see it's much darker. And I'm gonna place that on the outer corner. So it's almost an extension of that lid color, but you're giving yourself some dimension like you would using an outer corner shade, which to me is typically a matte shade. So this is kind of like two birds with one stone. And it's a very pretty color. I'll swatch that for you. It's like a rust burnt copper color. 
Isn't that gorgeous? Y'all, you can absolutely cannot go wrong with Busy Art. You just can't. So while I could go back into this like little matte brown shade right here for the outer corner, I don't feel like I need to. I feel like those three steps make a very pretty eye look. Now let's go ahead and set the under eyes with my Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Setting Powder for the under eye in light. I use my Wayne Goss number two to set and I basically just press it in. I don't swipe because I don't want to mess up the concealer that is underneath. I'm just pressing. And it's set. I was going to use the Shiseido powder but this is a little bit of a radiant powder and I feel like I'm pretty radiant as it is. So I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury powder that I mentioned. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in medium and my La Mer brush, my La Mer powder brush, which is also something to look at at the sale because I do love this brush. Super soft, super expensive. So if you can get it at a discount, Got something in my eye, and all the better if you have been eyeing this brush. Highlight Clinique powder, powder, power, flower. Oh my goodness, I was right the first time. Clinique powder pop flower highlighter it gets me every time. Oh, this is the one I did have on in that video because it's one of my favorite highlighters. It is again peachy in undertone, but it's not like, you're not gonna be painting a stripe of peach onto your cheek on that, but it's just so pretty. It's not glittery, it's a big gelée, so you're not gonna get any like big particles of anything on your face. It's just very, very pretty. Now I'm gonna use the blush that I had on in that video too. This is the Dior blush in Charnel. And this is very, very neutral, goes with everything not super shiny. I mean, look at that color. So pretty. And you know, I've got a buff. Radiant Light Hourglass. It Cosmetics Duo Fiber Brush. Not sure if you can get this brush at Sephora, but I do believe it's at Ulta now. No harsh lines. Now, I'm going to show you I had mentioned the Charlotte Tilbury powder, how a lot of times if I get done with my makeup and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm a little shiny in areas that I don't want, I will go in with, this is the Jane Ardell Flocked Sponge, which is one of my favorites for touch up. And I'll put a little bit on the Flocked Sponge, and then I'll just take it right in like this little areas that tend to get a little shiny. And press that powder in and it takes it away. I can't do that with every one of my pressed powders and have the same effect. So I want to show that in action as well. Let's go into the palette again and I'm going to take, I'm probably going to mix the same two matte colors that I use. This is the Refer 14 brush and smoke out that lower lash line. And because these two colors are not super dark, because I have blue eyes, which really lend well to these colors, I'm going to bring that down pretty far. So this is, the 14 brush is a little bit bigger than like the Wayne Goss number 20 or, you know, some of the other brushes that you've seen me use because I want to get that really smoked out effect. So I will choose a larger brush like this. For those days. Now, if I was going in with the, that dark, dark brown, I would not use the size brush. For mascara, I used the Kevin Aquan The Volume Mascara, which is a tubing mascara, which means that you need hot, not hot, warm water. Don't put hot water. <laughs> warm water to be able to take it off. Now, if you've never used a tubing mascara, or if you've never used this one, because I've used tubing mascaras in the past, but I had never used this one, and when I took it off, it was like spiders in my sink. <laughs> but rest assured, it all came off. And because you need warm water to, re to remove it, it absolutely will not smudge throughout the day. It is a very, 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 very tiny, skinny brush, which you do not usually think of when you think of volumizing mascaras. But you can see, I mean, it's no slouch on the lash department. And I'm telling you, it does not move. So I didn't talk about that one because I totally forgot to do mascara and I totally forgot to talk about 
lips in the last video, but I did um, link a couple of lips. I forgot about these, so I will link obviously this in the mascara. This is from Lila B, and it is their lip oil, tinted lip oil. This is in the color B Elegant, which is a brownie nude color. And in my opinion, perfect for fall. I also have B Romantic, which is a very pretty, cool toned pink. So they're not like extremely opaque, although, I mean, you can definitely see that. I didn't do any inner corner or brow bone highlights, so I'm gonna go into this gold color right here. A little bit of that on my inner corner. And I was gonna say, oh, I'll skip the brow bone, but let's be real. My name's Mandy Davis. I don't skip brow bones. And uh, I left a little shimmer there. And I know not everybody does, but it's what makes the world go round. And then finally, I'm going to set my face using the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. Shake it up. Set, and since that Kevin Aquan mascara is like a tubing mascara, it's not going to mess up when you spray your face. So that is the completed look. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I will, as always, link everything down in the description box. I waited to the very end until I couldn't talk. So you can have easy access. I do use affiliate links. It helps me out tremendously if you use them, but you definitely don't have to. Everything will still be listed and you can just go search for it otherwise. Either way, I am so glad that you joined me today. Thank you for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. I will be posting my haul once my goodies come in the mail. If you are interested to see what I picked up, be sure to stay tuned. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, safe, and sane, and most of all, that you go out and have a very blessed day.